Hi, my name's Michael Kirby, and welcome to the second episode of my mini-series, On Level Design, Untold Tricks. In these videos, we explore untold tricks and techniques that are implemented into level design, and how they are used to affect players' experiences and behaviours towards virtual space, as well as encourage their progression through our gameplay. In the last video, we looked at boundaries, what types there are, and how they are used in video game levels. In this video, we will be looking at techniques of architecture. We will see how some of these unspoken tricks are being used in video games to guide gameplay and to grab players' attentions. The purpose of architecture is to improve people's lives by creating timeless, varied and beautiful spaces. Compare this to levels in video games, we can see how much there is a connection between architecture and design of levels. That being, level design is used to improve players' experiences and make them feel immersed into the very beautiful virtual spaces that are presented to them. Architecture is a massive subject area to talk about, so for this video we will be focusing on techniques that as players we don't necessarily see, but as designers it is key for us to know how they work and what they are used for. If you want to learn more about this topic area in more detail, I suggest reading works by Christopher Taunton about an architectural approach to level design, as well as an article by Tom Pugh on level design tips and tricks. The links will be in the description down below. There are three techniques that we will be exploring. That of starting points, leading lines, and denial and reward. While leading lines is a compositional technique, it still has ties to both architecture and level design respectfully. We're going to kick things off with starting points. Starting points are about giving players enough information to make a strong first move at the start of a level. You can do this by using multiple tricks such as visual cues, boundaries and of course using the virtual space. In the Spire of the Dragon trilogy games we can see a lot of strong examples of starting points being used in its level design. At the start of Spire Year of the Dragon in the first homeworld, Sunrise Spring, we can see that Spyro is placed in a way where players have access to all the information they need to start the game off, with the gems being used to lead players up to the first level portal. However, there are still gems being used to lead players off the main path towards an extra life, and a hidden dragon egg which is tucked away around the corner. Speaking of dragon eggs, we can see one tucked up on a ledge just above the first portal, which is out of player's reach. If you watched my last video, you can identify this as a soft boundary trick at work. That being, we can see the dragon egg, and we can see that to get there we have to go through a cave. However, it's still being restricted to tell us where that cave entrance is, and it's up to us to find a way to get into that cave to then reach the dragon egg. This is finally all supported together by leading lines from the level's build structure. This is being used to help focus players' attention on the path ahead and to push progression of the game forward. Essentially, we have everything we need to know to start the game off, as it is all shown to us through the level's design just in this small area of the homeworld. So now we know that starting points are about giving players enough information to make the best move possible to progress forward. And by using these tricks, as well as others, we are able to do this through the level design without having to use any words to explain how you start the game. This leads us nicely to leading lines. As mentioned earlier, it is a composition technique that is used in photography, where the person viewing the photo's attention is drawn to lines that lead them to the main subject area of an image. And in video games, this can be used to focus players' attention on focal points that may interest players, or if designers want players to keep their eye on an event that is unfolding before them. Let's look at Dead Space. In this game, it uses leading lines in its level design, with the use of corridors, to help build up suspense and the element of horror and of the unknown, as well as building up the sense of you being trapped in a small room with very little room to move around in excellent for a horror title. In this particular part of the game, leading lines are being used to focus players' eyes on a collectible at the end of the path. We can see that the rails are being used to lead players' eyes towards the centre of where the collectible is. The game also takes the opportunity to make players feel a false sense of security by having them deal with an enemy beforehand. But as players get close enough towards the collectible, an event will be triggered, causing the enemy to pop out of sight 
Starscream players. This example demonstrates how leading lines can be used to take control and focus away from players without doing it directly. The final technique is denial and reward. This one is used to enrich the approach to the ultimate unveiling of the destination. We see this used in video games where players can see the goal from the starter level, but as they go on the journey they will lose sight of that goal and players won't regain sight of it until they have reached or have neared their final destination. This can be used for pushing progression throughout a level, as players will know where they need to go even when they lose sight of that goal, as they will still have an idea of what to look out for. When the goal re-emerges into their sights, they will know that they're heading on the right path. Having landmarks stand out help convey this technique more clearly. In Uncharted 4, we see this technique being used several times, with Sam's Tower in the Madagascar level, the looming mountain near the end of the game, and the pirate village, just to name a few. Here we can see the pirate mansion that players need to reach, which is the denial and reward technique being used. As players progress through this level, they will lose sight of it, and won't regain sight of it until they've reached closer to the destination. But in this example we can also see leading lines, focusing players' attention on that mansion. All of this at the starter level, again reinforcing all three techniques in one level. We can see this in games such as Last of Us with the Pittsburgh chapter, and even in Journey with the mountain being the end goal. In conclusion, we have learnt what these three tricks are and understand what they are used for. These techniques may originate from architecture, but they still have a place and purpose to play in level design, with starting points, also known as arrival sequence, is used to create a sense of anticipation on what lies ahead by creating memorable moments and luring players into the level. Leading lines can be used to focus players attention on events that may be playing out, and on items and collectibles that might be a point of interest for players. While denial and reward can be an effective way to tell players where they need to go without objective text or dotted lines or arrows to guide them on their way. If you are interested in what I do then click on these videos to check out some of my gaming content as well as watch the mini series from the first episode. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed and found this video to be very insightful and if you want to keep up to date with more of my videos then subscribe and hit the bell icon for more notifications. Have a nice day.